I was on this program last year, and uh, it was a tremendous year. We said prices were as high as they've ever been. Go ahead and sell your calves. Be happy with it. But there's a lot of potential to hold on to them and wean them and feed them. You probably make money no matter how you do it. It's kind of how it worked out. This year's a different situation. It is a bigger marketing decision because the margins are kind of tough, and you have to make a decision, is there enough in it or too much risk to decide to feed them. Uh, backgrounding is pretty wide open, includes a lot of different things. Basically, wean the calf, feed it for a while. That can be as short as 30, 40 days just to precondition it and get it ready for a sale as a wean calf, or it could be carrying it clear through till spring and maybe taking them up to 950,000 pounds. So as I look at different strategies or systems for tonight's talk, I kind of broke it down into just a few categories that we're going to categorize backgrounding. One is we have different start weights of cattle, whether it's in your own herd, you got your light weights, your mid weights, your heavy weights, or whether you're a May calver or a February calver or whatever, you might be making a decision regarding either light calves or heavier calves. So I've broken that into three weight groups, 450s, 550s, and 650s. And I'm just going to deal with steers, top grade, medium large frame, well-muscled steers. <coughs> then once you have a certain weight of cattle that you're going to feed, you have to decide what feed you have to work with and how much you're going to push them for gain. And for my talk tonight, we've broken that into three different levels pound and three quarter, two and a half pounds, and three and a quarter. And then, of course, you got to figure out what's your market target. When do these cattle have to go to town? When do you want them to go to town? Do you want to just put 100 pounds on them? Do you want them out by January? Will you put 300 pounds on them? So I also added a third variable, and that's the amount of gain in the time we market the calves. So with all those different scenarios, I, I built some ugly tables here I'll share in a minute, but we tried to get at what the cost was per pound of gain with different strategies, what your break-even cost would be, when and at what weight would those cattle come to market, and then what we would project for a return per head to do that. But before we can get to those tables, <clears throat> we have to come up with valuing what these cattle are worth today if we're going to compare what they might be worth some other day with some added cost. And Tim mentioned we have USDA market reports, we have auction barn market reports, and we have to get a feel for, for what they could be worth at the start of the backgrounding phase. Likewise, we have to have some expectation if, of what we might get for them at the wait and time we do sell them, and certainly futures markets become what some of our guide in planning those prices. So with the help of Tim Petrie, I created the next table. I can get there. In which we looked at the different months and the, oop, better back up now. I'm going to back up because I'm having kind of a laggy <laughs> advance here. I got ahead of myself. I'm not sure how I even get there anymore. Can you use the arrows on your computer? This is wasting precious time. What's that? Oh, look at this one. There, it's coming. Anyways, I said we needed to get some planning prices. <laughs> Here they are. A uh, lot of numbers on this table. If you notice in October, we've got these 450 to 5 weight steers priced at $1.75. Tim mentioned these markets are changing fast on some lightweights because of some wheat pasture prospects. We 
You got the 500 to 550s at $1.63, 550 to 6, 650 is $1.52. Then you can see using the futures guide, uh, futures prices as a guide in some price slides, we've got cattle price for all different weights all the way through March up to 950 pounds. There is a slight rise in futures prices clear out there, and it came up a couple dollars since this chart was put together on Monday, but they're relatively flat. I've got a very slow advancing computer here. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to take a quick look at before I built these budgets was Tim mentioned there's a lot of volatility. Corn is swinging 30, 40 cents. Feeder cattle are up five, down eight, plus three. And so maybe any kind of feeding program should have some budgeted money in there to cover some risk insurance. This was uh, yesterday's quote for LRP. And if you look at the very bottom tier on this table, it said for weight two steers, that's the heavyweight steers, in March. Uh, they were trading in the futures at dollar fifty one. We could buy a dollar or a dollar forty three, hundred forty three, a hundred weight price protection for two point twenty eight a hundred weight. So we can buy some level of product uh, protection, probably in that fifteen to twenty dollar range. We won't be at the money with that kind of a premium or that kind of money set aside for risk protection. For feed costs in my budgets, I uh, asked Carl to provide me some ration costs and some expected performance for different weights cattle. And of that, these are some of the same prices he shared with you. You're pricing the alfalfa at 140, grass hay at 80, corn at 675, supplement at 500. And they did work out to the lower rates again, around $152 a ton. Two and a half pound gains at around 177, and the three and a quarters at about $194 a ton. Uh, those uh, numbers were developed with a cow bites ration formulating program, and I just have an example on this slide of, of what that will do. It will actually formulate the ration, tell you how many pounds per feed, to feed, it will tell you what the ration contains, and it will predict performance. So we use that tool to help come up with meeting our uh, performance targets. Now we'll go in and look at how, oh, then I took the numbers for what we think calves are selling for, what we think they'll be worth, what our feeding costs will be, and we plugged them into some budgets. I used a little spreadsheet called Calf Web that's interactive on the web. There's other ones. Tim has one on his extension livestock economics site, and so those are tools you can use if you want to play around with your own numbers. Let's start first with those lightweight calves. 450-pound Steer calf at $1.75 a pound is $787 a head. Now you can see some different colored or shaded backgrounds, and the first three columns are what if we gain at one, uh, one and three quarters a day to put on either 100 pounds a gain, 200 pounds, or 300. The next shaded block is if we push them a little harder, feed that little more expensive ration, that $177 a ton ration, and we only do it for either 100 pounds a gain, 200 pounds a gain, or 300 pounds a gain. You'll notice if we go down there uh, to the pink bar across the middle, we have the break-even cost for those cattle based on their incoming cost and their feeding costs. And there's some interest and LRP expense and yardage cost in there. And I might mention and in all these budgets, yardage is only in there at 20 cents. That's not full value, but for somebody on farm doing it, that might be what he charged. If you're going to a custom feeder, it will be at least double that, if not more. Anyways, in just following those columns down, you'll see that uh, growing these light calves at a fairly slow rate of gain did not seem to make any money uh, for the price estimates we used uh, at those weights and at those dates. The 450-pound calf kept around to be a 550-pound calf in December 11th. Uh, would have a break-even of $1.66. Planning price we used was $1.60. That was a losing proposition of minus $36. 
As we got over into pushing the calf a little harder and putting more pounds of weight on him, taking that light calf, growing him at two and a half pounds, getting him clear out to February at 750 pounds, we found a margin in there where the cost of gain was low enough, and the amount of pounds we put on high enough, and the market rise, even as slight as it was, resulted in a plus 68 pound. So you can see that's kind of some margins for some different scenarios on the lightweight steer. Probably more typical for this time of the year would be to consider the 550 pound steer calf. We priced him in at $1.63, which is $896 a head. And again, we have three levels of gain and we have three levels of amount of gain, either 100, 200, or 300 pounds. And starting at the first one again, didn't matter if we only put 100 pounds on or kept them around and put 300 pounds on, that steer at only a dollar, or only at 1.3 or 1.75 pounds a gain a day did not seem to make any money. If we pushed him a little faster, we got into making some money when we put on at least 200 pounds a gain rather than just keeping him around for a short amount of time, like 40 days. And if we pushed him quite hard, and not all calves are capable of this without getting some market discount and being too fleshy and getting discounts. Uh, we actually found some of those levels profitable, particularly if we could have calves capable of that kind of gain and staying trim and, and kind of green. The third weight of calves that I compared was 650 pound steers, and I just eliminated the, the real slow rate of gain on a big growthy calf like that, and I've scenarioed it at two and a half, three and a quarter. Again, you can see that weaning and feeding calves on a flat market, some initial startup costs and only doing it for 100 pounds of gain is usually not long enough for enough margin to get very profitable or even break even. So when you get in adding more weight by a faster rate of gain, which brings down your cost of gain, which is included in this table, it shows the faster you feed them, the lower your cost of gain is. Of course, the more money you're spending per calf. Feed costs are tremendously higher for when you push them at three and a quarter versus two and a half. But your cost of gain goes down, the market has a slight rise in it, and so feeding heavier weights, marketing a little later, tends to be the most attractive looking scenarios at this time. Might mention that all these things are so sensitive to a few dollar swing in the price of cattle, either in or out, and changes in feed cost, that this is not marked in stone. It probably isn't even good today to use it for planning tomorrow. It's a continuing process of evaluating your situation. I didn't do heifers, but I thought maybe one little example of a heifer budget for people who want to keep their heifers around and keep the flexibility that they might become breeders or take them to, to bulls if the spring is good and grass is looking promising and rebuilding is on people's minds, or to turn them into feeders at that point. Maybe we could winter the 550-pound heifer at a fairly low rate of gain on a very high roughage ration with just a little supplement. And what would our cost of gain be? What would our cost per day in feed be? And what would a break-even be? Putting those numbers together where I valued the 550 weight heifer to $1.45, and that's 15 cents under her steer mate that I used earlier. And I don't know where those slides will end up, but usually early in the fall, lighter heifers are discounted severely. So anyway, I priced her at $1.45. She had a $798 initial value. She would come in with a break-even cost of $1.32 in the end of March at 800 pounds and that would be a $1,053 break-even price. So if you're planning to hold some heifers because the slide is too great right now and you think there might be potential for those heifers to actually uh, gain in value through interest in expansion uh, as breeding females, that's kind of where it looks like she's going to have to trade come into March. And so Wrapping up, I would just say we, we have a fairly flat price outlook this year. Uh, things can change, a rally could occur, but for planning, it looked like we have to uh, kind of anticipate a fairly flat market. 
We have very high cost feed and high cost of gain, so the opportunities to make money backgrounding certainly could be related to what you have to value the calf in or purchase a calf. Even if you break even on the calf feeding, if you have a feed like silage that you're able to market at $65 a ton or price it in as these rations were built on, uh, that you'll make some money on the corn. Uh, a market rally could occur, maybe particularly with some of these heifers. And I think the feeds that were used in here were kind of your basic standard feeds. A lot of people have some opportunity feeds, some lower cost feeds. And so if you are in a situation where you have some that are drastically priced different than the ones used in the budgets, that changes your picture. And finally, I'd say if you are going to feed, uh, it looks like the most potential resides with cattle that are fed to put on at least 200 pounds of gain and fed at least a, a moderate level of rate of gain. Uh, with that, I've included in the budgets a $15 per head uh, cost to buy some insurance. Uh, whenever we're feeding these cattle, the dollar values of eight, $900 calves, and $300 feeding costs, the risks are quite high, and I think that's something that needs to be considered right up front. With that, Carl, I guess that ends mine, and I can uh, get out of my slides and turn it over to the next one. Is there a question out there for John? Sounds good, John. I like looking at some of those prices there. Um, your issue of marketing silage at $70 a ton really kind of fits in play with that corn deal, and you get paid really well for that. So it's pretty interesting stuff in my mind.